What's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of Scales 13. In today's video, we're gonna be covering AccuMonitor humidity. What's up, Thunder? All right, guys, let's dive straight into AccuMonitor humidity. So AccuMonitors are from Northwestern Australia. Now, if you take a quick glance at the landscape, let's say you jump on Google, or if you're lucky enough to live in Australia, you'll think that this area is completely devoid of moisture. It looks like an area where you find nothing but rock and dried up sand and dirt. And even though there is a small bit of uh, vegetation there. The vegetation is not only sparse, but it's very, very weathered and looks very beaten up and dry. But the thing that you'll notice where you'll actually find acumonitors in the wild is not only on the inland, but the coast. So the coast is where you'll find a lot of humidity, but also even the inland parts of Northwestern Australia. If you look at the weather reports, the Humidity will bounce anywhere from about 40% to 70%. Now that's not exactly a really dry place, but of course if you look at the landscape and you look at these humidity levels, you're thinking, okay, well where is the majority of this humidity? It probably doesn't rain that often, which it doesn't, and of course if you look at an Aki monitor, it's not a tropical type of reptile, right? This animal needs, of course, high heat and it also needs humidity to be stable like I mentioned earlier but this animal isn't from a jungle it's not like Varana Salvatore where the animal is swimming in bodies of water and it's not an arboreal tree species like like you'll find with the mangrove monitors where there are, these animals will kind of hang out in some wet regions but they also like to climb and different things like that right this animal is an animal that lives on the ground now, of course, they can be semi-arboreal. They'll climb down trees. Uh, you'll find them on fence posts in Australia. But these guys, for the most part, are diggers. They'll dig deep into the substrate. And one thing that I really liked when I saw Dave Coppin's video on AccuMiners is when he actually took a digital hygrometer and he looked at the humidity within the burrows that these animals live in in the wild where they take refuge right now the important part about the burrow is this is where these guys will find most of their moisture and this is where they'll go to hydrate right and he found that the humidity in those burrows can go up to about 90 percent now that's a lot of moisture and the thing is when the animal goes down that burrow and it's breathing, the air exchange alone is allowing the animal to absorb enough moisture. Also with the animal being able to get a lot of moisture on its skin and help itself with shedding and just overall hydration of the animal. And for us in captivity, how do we mimic those type of environments for the acumonitor, right? Well, let's just look at what we have here, right? now. One thing I have for Thunder in his 4x2x2 two two enclosure is a nice digging box you can see right there in the background. And what the digging box allows is, it allows the animal to dig deep into an area of substrate where its body is completely covered. And the small opening on top of the dig box allows the box to hold more heat and more humidity without it escaping. So, this animal has a refuge that it can dig down to even during the day when the humidity is lower. And if you look at the enclosure right now, the humidity for a Akimaya's enclosure for most people during the day is going to be about, I'd say about 40 to 60%. You see right now my humidity is about 47%, right? Now, that's a little bit on the drier side. It's not like 10, 20%. So the animal has pretty good amount of moisture within the enclosure itself, right? Well, one thing I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna show you guys how quickly that humidity will jump up if I put the humidity gauge that I have here inside, sorry, Thunder, kind of spooked him, um, inside 
of the digging bot. And you can see how quickly that jumps up. Now going back to our discussion, there's other things you can do in the enclosure as well. If you have an enclosure that's deeper than mine, you can actually put a large amount of substrate in, throughout the entire enclosure. Now, for a lot of people, especially here in the States, we like to use at least 12 inches of substrate. That's a full foot of substrate in the animal's enclosure, right? Some people go up to even two feet of substrate, which is great if that's what you can provide. But for those of us who can't, for example, me right now, because I have a four by two by two, I basically put as much substrate as I possibly could without it going above the door. But for enclosure this size, the dig box is 100% a necessity because the animal needs to be able to bury itself completely in substrate from time to time. Now, one thing you'll notice with your Ackies, and this of course comes with personal education and time committed to learning more about the species of whether or not you have a male or a female, you'll find that as they get older, males will dig less than females do. The reason being is of course with females being the egg layers and even if the female's not breeding and hasn't been with a male and she's not exactly gravid with fertile eggs, she still has to pass her eggs which are infertile from time to time when she's cycling. And the thing about this is if the animal isn't able to find a place where they can comfortably lay those eggs, they'll sometimes wind up keeping them within their body and then they'll get egg bound, which of course is very, very bad for the animal's health and can actually wind up causing your animal to crash and burn, so to speak. So for females, it's even more important to make sure that they have deep substrate within the enclosure and a large digging box in order for them to deposit their eggs. So one thing you'll notice when the lights go out at night, whether you have a timer, whether you just turn them off, the humidity will spike very quickly. And the reason being is because Acumiters, of course, have a very hot basking spot that's well above 100 degrees. If you're keeping your Acumiter with proper temperatures, the basking spot should be about 140 degrees or higher. And the thing is, with these hot lights, the surface the surfaces that are being touched by the light in the enclosure are constantly being dried out. But just like in the wild, when the sun goes down, in this case, when the lights go out, the humidity is gonna to start to spike. My enclosure will be about 40 to 50% during the daytime. At nighttime, it spikes to about 70, 80%. And another thing that you'll actually notice is with the humidity rising, if you have your AC on in your house or if you have or if you live in a, in a cool area where the inside of your house is a temperature that's, let's say, in the high, high 60s, low 70s, you'll actually start to see a little bit of mist form on the glass of your animal's enclosure, which is basically just showing the temperature difference. Just like, of course, where you have a warm front and a cold front, it rains because now you're having condensation, you're having moisture. It's the same thing here. You're gonna get condensation on the glass where the water particles are actually starting to condense. Under, you want a little food while we uh, wrap up this video? Yeah, of course you do. All right, guys. So, and to go to kind of like a closing statement about Aki humidity, um, actually, let's check on our hygrometer and see how much it's spiked since I put the, the hygrometer. There we go. So ever since I put the little probe in there, it actually jumped up from about 47% to 68%. So that's just to show that this uh, little digging box right here holds a lot more humidity than the rest of the enclosure. That's another telltale sign too, guys. If you see your Aki monitor staying exclusively in its digging box, let's say you have a digging box in your enclosure, right? And the animal's always in there and you don't have a female who's laying eggs, you have a clear male like I have. Um, you might, it might be time to mist down the enclosure because if the humidity is too, too low, the animal, of course, will seek refuge just like it would in the wild. Now, that doesn't mean that, oh my God, my animal's sick or dying or whatever. That just means, hey, it's a little dry. That's why your animal's hanging out in the digging box so that we can have some more moisture. It's fine, it's just taking care of itself, but it's time for you to take care of business and just mist down your enclosure, that's all. And the thing is, this can vary from uh, household to household, guys. So if you have a pet Aki monitor 
and you want to make sure that the humidity is nice and stable for the Aki monitor. Remember that some people live all the way out in Arizona where it's very dry and some people live in humid areas like the southern parts of the United States like Florida. So the thing is, depending on what the humidity range is where you live and what the humidity is in your household, of course, you know, um, having an AC and depending on what your thermostat is set to can also be a factor. You might have to miss either less than me or more than me. For me, once a week, one spray down of all of the substrate in the animal's enclosure and I check the dig box. I actually don't add moisture to the dig box as often. I might add moisture to the dig box every two to three weeks. But the rest of the enclosure, definitely once a week it gets a spray down. So for me, that is the routine that works. But as far as uh, everyone else, remember just to, just to get those nice digital hygrometers in there along with your uh, thermometers to make sure that the temperatures and the humidity are where you want it to be. And make sure that um, you're paying attention to those ranges to make sure that they're not dipping too low or too high. You don't want your humidity to be about 90% to 100% like a lot of our very tropical reptiles have. Because the thing is, that can cause issues with the animal's skin and, actually, and it can actually cause the animal's toes to swell from all the excess moisture. Now, of course, you don't want that to happen because if the animal winds up getting infections on its feet, it can lose toes. Just the same as if the humidity was too low and the animal can't shed properly, and then that would cause the circulation of the animal to be lost in the smaller digits, and then the animal would lose toes as well. So you gotta keep it out of those extreme conditions of too dry and too moist. But Acumars can, of course, tolerate a large range of humidity. Like I said, 40 to 70% in the wild, and in their burrows, even higher, up to 90% when they wanna dig into the dirt. So it's a very wide range for these guys. 40 to 50% for the enclosure works just fine. And about 90% about in the deep substrate or the digging box works just well for me. It's not too hard to maintain, but you know, you just have to make sure you know what you're doing and that you're just paying attention to what's going on in your animal's enclosure. Anyway guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. Thunder's looking for more food. I'm gonna give him one more roach before we go. And I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. I got plenty more videos coming, plenty more of Thunder and all my other animals. And I got a lot of enclosure upgrades coming up that I think you guys will really enjoy. I'm going to make these uh, enclosures very beautiful. And a lot of guys are getting brand new setups all together. So I hope everyone enjoys, just like Thunder is going to enjoy this roach. <laughs> all right, guys. Everybody have a great day. Peace.